Let's get to the Word of God. It's found in <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 26. I am going to, uh, I'm going to, to some degree, I'm, I'm going to stay in the vein I was in last week. So I want you to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 as well. Colossians 3, verse 1. Again, Isaiah 26, verse 1. And uh, then let's go to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 1. We'll start, though, in Colossians. I want to just refresh your memory about this text and this discussion we've been having uh, about the mind and lens crafters and the perspectives and the views, which really is dealing with your mind and how you see things. And so I want to I want to stay right there because I feel like we wasn't done. Let, let's get right back to it. Colossians chapter three, verse one. We'll read that and then we'll go into uh, what I'm going to consider our, our our base scripture for today's argument. You ready? Colossians uh, chapter three, verse one says, "If ye then be risen with Christ, King James." Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now let's go to Isaiah 26. As you know, Colossians 3 is what we read last week as we preached a message called Lens Crafters. But today is going to be a little, a little, a little special. Uh, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 1 says this, In that day. <laughs> Shall this song be sung in the land of Judah? We have a strong city. Somebody shot that with me. Strong city. Put that in the chest right there. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Walls and bulwarks. These are defense mechanisms put up to fortify a city uh, that it won't be engaged uh, by an enemy or taken easily. So they have walls and the bulwarks. They're singing this. Again, this is a song. The next part of the, the lyrics goes, Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. But verse 3 is going to make my argument. We're going to take our discussion for the day. Those will keep him, or thou will keep him. I'm sorry. Thou will, thou wilt keep him. Him <laughs> in perfect peace, perfect peace, King James. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Let's say it again. Thou wilt keep him, or should I say, thou wilt keep in perfect uh, peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. The correct etymology of this is thou wilt keep. In perfect peace, whose mind, or should I say, mine stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Let's break this down again. Thou wilt keep in perfect peace, mine stayed, because he trusteth in thee. For the next few moments, I'm going to preach a simple message that I'm going to call mind craft. Mind craft. Craft. You got that, Kevin? You got that, Asa? Mind craft. All right? The do hard boys know where I'm going. So let me just do my introduction. Let me pray. Father, thank you for the time to get into this word. Lord, we give you the praise for the next 15, 20 minutes that we will be blessed by your encouragement, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to activate hope in your children. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Glory. Activate hope. Hope. Activate hope in your children. In Jesus' great name, I got a divine yes in my soul because somebody is about to be encouraged on today. I felt the Holy Ghost now because God's about to encourage you. All right. Last year, my sons, like every other kid who was in the age range of uh, 8 to 80, uh, was playing a video game called Mine, M-I-N-E, Craft. And I mean, Pastor Lisa can tell you, you would hear the boys all night long, back and forth, and then when we finally let them do the uh, the PlayStation Plus, I forgot what you call it, where they were able to go online with all their buddies and stuff, then it was a whole thing. And I mean, for the, I guess the last two years or so, they was playing, they don't play as much anymore, but they was playing this game called Minecraft and about it. So let me break down Minecraft a little bit. It's what I was able to learn online, and then with Asus' help, I was able to get some of the rest of it. In Minecraft, 
players explore a blocky, procedurally generated 3D world with infinite terrain. So they never run out of property, never run out of property, uh, and may discover and extract raw materials, craft tools, and items, and build structures or earthworks. So the purpose of this game is you have these block-like people, if you will, that have limitless potential as it pertains to land and assets, and their job is to build and structure their own world using the raw resources that the terrain provides it. Sounds a lot like Genesis chapter 2. Let's keep moving. And so depending upon the game modes, players can fight computer controlled mobs, which means they have enemies that are trying to stop them from being productive in the terrain that is provided for them to build in. And they call these enemies mobs. <laughs> mobs. They look like spiders. They look like robots. They look like little evil creatures, but they're, they're called mobs and they're block like as well. Now watch this. <laughs> or you can cooperate with or compete against other players in the same world. And the game modes include a survival mode. Now watch this. When you play survival mode, it's when the players must acquire resources to build the world and maintain their health and uh, a creative mode where players have unlimited resources. Now watch this. At the end of the game, because I asked Ace, I said, hey man, y'all played it so much, but have you beat it though? Have you ever beat the game uh, Minecraft? Minecraft? And he said, yes, we beat it. Kevin and I both beat it. So my, my two sons, my the brothers, got together and together they beat the game Minecraft and as they say long time ago we've been and beat that so they beat and I said how did you beat it how do you know you got to the end of the game how did you know and they said well we had to defeat what you call the Ender Dragon or Ender Dragon Ender Dragon I hope I said that right Asa. the Ender Dragon and the Ender Dragon I did some research is a dangerous flying hostile mob boss in other words this was the the, the boss of all the mobs that were trying to defeat you in all the other levels. In other words, he was the he was the he was the big principality, the, the big spiritual wickedness in heavenly. He 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 wasn't in the ground terrain. Actually he he flew around. Uh huh. He actually hovered over things. He, 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 or, or should I say, the dragon had different ways that it could move, and it didn't move like the ground troops. It, it was above the ground troops. It was an aerial assault with the dragon, and uh, and it's the it was no, it was large and naturally spawning mob of the game, and is widely known or acknowledged as the main antagonist and the final boss of Minecraft. When they got to the end of the game, you knew you won when you defeated the dragon at the end. Sounds a whole lot like the book of Revelations. But let's keep moving because I believe that God has given us infinite realities, infinite terrain, infinite resources, infinite creativity, and the possibility and the ability and the expectation even to partner with other people to allow us to be successful. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the highway and the avenue and the open Open door of your mind and bringing your thoughts into a place of subjection so that you and I can be fruitful and multiply and replenish in this season. Somebody shout this with me. Not Minecraft, Minecraft. Woo! Here we go. Isaiah chapter 26 says this. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Here's the song. We have a strong city. Salvation God will appoint for walls and bulwarks. For walls and bulwarks. B-U-L-W-A-R-K-S. Open ye the gates. That the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Though or thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. I've heard this scripture just like you. And this text so so many times over my journey as a Christian and even before, I heard this text all of my life that God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on. But I've never heard this scripture exegeted. So today, I don't know about you, but we're going to break this text down for a few minutes, jump into a few other points, and then I'm out of your hair. Y'all ready? I said, are you ready? Let's go. 
Let's give it a background. This particular scripture is really speaking to God's uh, people, the people of Israel, uh, returning back to the city of Jerusalem. Though the city of Jerusalem is not mentioned, the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the song that will be sung. Uh, this, this is the download of the Spirit of God within the man of God to give the, the lyrics to a prophetic song that Israel is soon going to sing about them going back to the holy city or going back to the place where the temple is. Oh, I said something. Going back to a place of, of, of tranquility and to a place of safety and uh, to a place of, uh, of welfare and shelter. There you go. Up to, a, to a place where they are in the city of our God, the city of David, into Jerusalem. And Jerusalem being fortified and being a place that God has set up walls and bulwarks. And this is the song that they're going to sing. They're not singing it on this day. But this is the prophetic song of the Lord that Isaiah is teaching the people of God for a soon coming victory. And how do they know that victory is coming? Because they just watched God defeat Moab. And Moab was some of the enemies of that time that had overran what was known as Jerusalem and had taken authority and taken place and with their pagan gods and their mockery of who Yahweh is. God had punished Moab in the eyesight or was punishing Moab in the eyesight of Israel. And Israel is now at a place where they're learning to trust God. And the song says that they will sing over themselves that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now that word stayed or should I say uh, uh, who keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. That word stayed or in another translation talks about steadfast actually, actually has an Ethiopic or should I say an Ethiopian uh, origin to that. It's an Hebrew word but it has an Ethiopic uh, root system which literally means to lean or to lay. So when it says who keep his mind stayed it means to lean or to lay or to rest or to support. But what I found was very interesting. Stay with me here. Don't leave me yet. It literally means, watch this, to lean or to lay your hand upon. I need you to do me a favor real quick while you're at home watching me. Lay your hand on your head and say, Father, help me mind the, yeah, help me mind the craftiness of what you've given me. Help me comb through so that I can keep my mind focused in this season. Why does it matter? Because the enemy is after your thoughts. The enemy is after your idle mind. The enemy is after your thinking. And if you don't believe me, have you ever sat down in the car or sat in your room or sat in the bed at night and got to lay your, yeah, looking up at the ceiling because you cannot shut this thing off? Why? Because this season is coming at you so fast with so many thoughts, so many concerns, so many stresses, so many worries, but the enemy is using this opportunity to flip you into a place where you start messing up in your head, you start getting frustrated in your head, you start getting frustrated in your head, you start getting discouraged in your head, and I need you to mind the craft of your mind right now and start building the framework, watch this, of, of believing that God is not going to leave you, nor forsake you, nor turn his back on you, nor walk away from you, nor become distant with you. He is there to bring you into perfect peace, and I know we are coming upon election time, and people are losing the, the last of what they had left of their mind but the people of God we trust we trust in God he says I'll keep your mind in perfect peace whose mind is stayed or whose hand is laid upon their head and the Hebrew word for mind comes from a root meaning means to form a fashion whose that means whose form or whose Fashion is leaning on God, who's formed the way you move, not just the way you think only, but, but from how you think, the way you move, the way you form your life, the way you fashion and posture yourself, the way you position yourself. I need you to go in the chat right now for the first time and type these words in with me. Say this with me. Say, I, I move, I move like I'm in peace. Hey, I move like I'm in peace. I, I dress like I got peace. I, I talk like I got peace. I'm positioned like I have peace. Even though it looks like it's chaotic around us, I'm cool because I already have peace. He says, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is sustained or supported, yeah, or upheld. Come on now. So if your mind is stayed and supported and upheld, you have the right and the access to peace. I heard a lady say the other night, oh, a mother Estella boy said this, no, Mother Shaw said this in the Church of God in Christ. Old church mother who used to be over all of the 
the Kojic uh, women of the Church of God in Christ back in the 1970s and 80s. And Mother Shaw said that Servant Mason, which is Bishop, uh, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, said these words. He says, if he says he's going to give you peace, you at least got to have sense enough to reach up and get it. At least have enough sense to go and get it. If God says, I will keep your mind in perfect peace, at least have enough sense to go and get the peace he just told you he's going to give you. Let's keep moving. James chapter 1, verse 8. I came to talk to your mind to settle you in this season just like I've had to settle myself. Hey! Because I know that the enemy's been after my thoughts, after your thoughts, after everybody's thoughts. He's after the thought life and the thought world because if he can control the way you think, then he'll control what you build. But the devil, come here all nations, y'all know what that is. Because he is a liar, a long curly head liar with an S curl and a wave nouveau because he's that kind of liar. Listen, we have to control our minds so we can dictate what we want to build for the half of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Let's keep moving. James chapter 1 verse 8 says it like this. A double-minded man, one man, is unstable in all of their ways. The basic soul condition here that James is talking about is described as the term double-minded, which means double-souled. Woo! It means your soul is split. It means that they have a divided soul. It means you vacillate between self-reliance and God-reliance. Uh-huh. See, there's some of you watching right now that are vacillating between trusting God and trusting yourself. You've been so, uh, 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 uh so calculated, so cunning even, that you've been able to figure out some things that you can do without God. But the devil, y'all know what that is. Because he is that liar, you got to pull yourself back into a place where you allow yourself to be God. If there's anything God has taught us in this season, he has taught us how to rely on him. You can't rely on this party. You can't rely on that party. You can't rely on no party. The only thing that you can rely on in this season is the voice and the word of God. Are y'all here? And the gifting of the Holy Ghost. Hey, if God is not giving, let me keep moving. I'm about to preach and have a whole fit and I still got a long way to go. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways or her ways. Put your hand on your head. Let's mind that craft and say this with me. Lord, keep my mind from being double. Shout it with me. Keep my mind. Keep my soul from being. I don't want to tell you I trust you and then act like I don't. I don't want to say I believe you and then pretend like I do. I don't want to, I don't want to say this about you and I really have a whole nother, another thought process. I don't want to be second guessing you when I just got through praying. I don't want to, yeah, I need my mind to be stable because a double minded woman, man, is unstable and everything that they do. Let's keep moving. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Let me walk this text a little bit. Scripture says, Jesus says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Let me tell you something about your mind. In this season, if you're not careful, you will find yourself in cruise control. What does that mean? Programmed worship, sitting down because you've been so accustomed to watching us online and sitting there eating your Fruit Loops or your Corn Flakes or your, your, your Cinnamon Toast crunch or your apple jacks or or uh, or you know what raisin bread whatever you eat malto meal oatmeal porridge whatever you do while you sitting at home doing that we sometimes get to the point where we're so programmed there was a people around the time of Christ that got so programmed with their worship they actually could spend two or three hours in the sanctuary and still produce nothing because their hearts were far away you gotta you and I gotta get our minds back and focus as we prepare to reach enter into Jerusalem as we prepare to go back into the sanctuary. We can't allow ourselves to be so programmed with how we've been doing it over the last seven months, but we got to be ready for God to blow our minds. Let me tell you something. Put this in the chest right now for the second time. No more scripted performances. Huh? No more scripted performances. I will not give God what I've given him over the last... The devil is... Oh. He's a liar. Let's keep moving. Here we go. I'm having a blast, man. I'm having a blast. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And I'm coming for your head right now. Here it is. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Uh-huh. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh-huh. 
and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Read, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Casting down imaginations in this season, you're going to have to do it. I know it sucks. I know it's hard, but you're going to have to pull your imaginations into the will of God. How do I do that? It's a military imagery that Paul, the writer, uh, is explaining to us. It means to, to demolish any argument or put an end to any argument or reasoning or theory or sophistry or idea that exalts itself beyond or above God's knowledge in you or the knowledge of God in you. Let's keep moving. So you got to pull those thoughts into subjection. If we're going to craft this mind, we got to pull our thoughts into subjection. And let me tell you something. Be honest with you. You ain't got to say this in the chat, though. But be honest. Be honest with yourself. You've been thinking some crazy stuff, right? I see you. You've been thinking some crazy. I know you have. You've been having some outlandish thoughts. Yes, you have. Don't you lie to me. Don't you lie to yourself. You've been having some outlandish I heard this. You've been having some way out there conversations. I mean, in your head, you've even... Oh, Lord, here we go, Kevin. Here we go. Some of you have even questioned God as if as though, is he God? Oh, I know I'm talking it. I know I am. Yes, I am. Yep. Some... <laughs> you've been... You got to pull, I'm telling you, I know this is right. You got to pull those stuff. You've been questioning even the healing power of God. You see, 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 see. Where's the white jacket today? Where, <laughs> where are the Colosseums full of people that was getting healed of everything else? And I'm not making fun, but I'm saying, where we at? Where we at? Where's the white jacket? Where's the Hayukin? Where's the, where's, the, where's the fire on you and people getting healed? I'm telling you. All right. So let's talk about some of these mind assassins before I get in trouble. Number one, here's a, here's a mind assassin. Here's one that comes, some of the mob, the mob mentality, the mob members, just like in the game Minecraft. Here's some of the mobs that come after your mind. You ready? They come after your productivity. Offense. Offense. If you have managed to be offended in COVID, you're crazy. If you can hold on to an offense in COVID, you might be kind of nuts. You might be, you might be a little, just a little, you might, it, it, something, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. I, the altar will be open soon. Number two, nosy people. <laughs> Let me tell you something about nosy. That's what the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. He said, son, he said, he said, tell, tell my kids that this is not the season to be nosy, wondering about what somebody else is doing and what they're doing. I wonder what this looks like, this, whatever. Yeah, you know why you nosy? you so nosy because you don't want to deal with your stuff. Ooh. That's what he told me. He said, he said some, some of the, no, he said the nosiest people in seasons like this are people who refuse to look at their own stuff. They don't want to comb through the thing. There was a song back when I was a kid. They used to have, come on, it was sweep around your own front door. For you try to sweep around mine. If you find that clip, play that song. Doom, doom. Sweep around your own. Is the thing in the front door? You see the front door, back door. Before you try, yeah. Nosy. Next one. Denial. <laughs> Some of us, we can't craft our minds because we're in denial that we're losing it. Last one. Carnality, just straight fleshy. How many of you, tell the truth now, you ain't got to say it in the chat, but tell the truth to yourself. How many of you have been the most carnal over the last few months of your journey with God than you have been your entire life? You've been returning to some stuff, drinking some stuff, watching some stuff, saying some stuff, looking at some stuff, thinking some stuff. Partnering with other people about some stuff, the most carnal you've been because you and I have not put our minds under subjection. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I'm almost there because I got some encouragement. So here's a few things that, that I believe that believers will lose when they stay off course. You ready? When you don't get your mind together, when you don't craft your mind. Number one, it delays God's plan for your life. Write that down. It delays God's plan for your life. If I don't, if I don't get my mind under control, I'm going to delay God's plan for my life. I'm going to 
delay his plan for my life. Number two, number two, if I don't get my craft my mind and get my mind under control, then then uh, then uh, then what happens is I can get involved in gimmicks and little schemes. I can get involved in gimmicks and little schemes, gimmicks and little schemes. Yeah, even little get rich quick schemes, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep moving. Number three, if I don't get my mind under control, then I can embarrass the kingdom of God. I'll embarrass the kingdom of God. Write that down. I'll embarrass the kingdom of God. That's my last one. If I don't get my mind in control, then I can forfeit participation in the kingdom of God. I can forfeit my participation in the kingdom of God. But I got some encouragement for you. Here we go. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Message Bible, and I'm almost done. Keep your eyes, your focus on Jesus. Who began, who both began and finished the race we're in. Study how he did it. It is because he never lost sight, focus of where he, where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. Read it with me. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. And when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again. Item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. I am done. That's it. Book is closed. It is finished. I gave you that text. Because we got to get our minds. He says, for the joy that was set before me, he endured the cross. I mean, we got to get our minds together. The enemy's after your thinking. But you're going to get your mind back. You're going to get your mind back. I'm telling you, beloved, one of the things that has been, I mean, a challenge in this season for me personally is the assault of the mind. Having, uh, moving in a situation where as a pastor, you can't see the people that God has called you to, that you can't feed the flock of God in person that you have to rely upon the camera, which is not a problem, but, but as, a, as a human being, you long to be in the presence of people you love, to, to have to deal with you know, walking your family through this uh, season, this pandemic, and people you care about, and, and you, you know, all of that that's happening. And then on top of that, God gives you an assignment in faith that you don't have all of the resources to complete in the midst of this. You have to have your mind crafted. <laughs> I need you to say this with me. I'm built for this season. I'm built for this season. You, because you haven't fainted, because you haven't thrown in the towel, because you haven't quit, because you haven't blown your brains out, because you haven't, because you haven't taken pills and hoped to not wake up, and because you almost had car accidents, but they didn't take you out, and because because God has kept you for such a time as now, please understand you were born for this. But in order, hallelujah, in order for you to see the difference, I told you at the top of the year, I never knew that this was coming. I never knew this was gonna hit us as a church, as a people, as a, as a body, as a body. I never saw this, but I heard God say that this will be the year in our difference, hallelujah. This is the year that the, the speckled lambs and the, the ones without speckles would be separated. This is the year in our difference. And so because we're in that difference, what allows us to be in that difference and walk in that difference and live in that difference is our ability to craft it in our mind. We got to mind our craft. I'm gonna pray for you real quick. Father, I thank you for every man and woman watching me now whose heart has been encouraged because we can look at Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. We can look at him, read his story, and what he went through, the litany, as the scripture says, the hostility, and how he endured it for the exhilarating finish of the cross. I thank you that your people won't give up in this season. We are almost there. <laughs> and around the corner, ha! Because we won't cancel this year, because we, don't, we haven't thrown this year away. We, we trust you. I feel you. We trust you so much. Hey, to do great things this year. And we give you the praise for it now. In Jesus' name.